We're going to start by talking about how to do what are called numeric derivatives on the calculator. Numeric derivatives on the calculator. Yesterday, the homework that I gave you asked you to take the derivative using product or quotient rule and then check it with a calculator. Well, you need to know how to check it with a calculator. Okay? Now, these numeric derivatives mean that you can use it to find the derivative at a given point. It will not find the derivative equation for you. It will not do the product rule for you and the quotient rule for you and say what it is in terms of x. It will only find the derivative at a specific point. Okay? I am going to write down old OS and new OS. Do you think you know what OS means? Operating, Operating system, exactly. Okay. This is for those of you who have a TI-83 or an 83 plus calculator. This one is for those of you who have a TI-84 or an 84 plus calculator with a new operating system on it. I think For both calculators, you are going to type math 8. Math 8. Okay? Now, let me change my calculator really fast into old operating system mode because you can actually do that on the 84s. Okay, if you have an 83 or an 83 plus and you type in math 8, this is what you're going to see. Okay, you are going to see the phrase N deriv. N D E R I V. If you have an 83 calculator, this is what you see. 84s have something totally different, so just sit tight for a minute if you have an 84. Okay, for those of you who have an N. 83 calculator. You're going to see this, and then after this, you're going to type in the following. Now, you're not going to do it now because you don't have a function to do it with just yet. Please just write this down. Write f of x, comma, x, comma, value. And the comma is un above the number 7. The comma is above the number 7. Because that's something we haven't used a whole lot in this class, is the comma key. Okay? Now, if you happen to have the new calculator and you type math 8, this is what you see, isn't it? Those of you with 84s, is this what you see? So I'm going to move this over and write this down over here. It's a D over D square parentheses, square, parentheses, line. And then it has a square here that you don't fill in and a square that you do here. That's going to turn into an X in a minute. I didn't realize that was a square there. Okay. In the first square here is going to go the X. That's where an X is going to go every time because it's DDX, the way we learned derivative before. In the big parentheses is going to be the function. That's where the function goes. And over here, this is where the value goes, whatever number. I want to find the derivative at 2. That's where the 2 goes. I want to find the derivative at 7. That's where the 7 goes. Okay? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a problem. And I don't care which calculator you have. We're going to go follow the steps and see if you can find the derivative. So, for example, find the derivative of f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 5 at x equals 3. Find the derivative of f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 5 at the point x equals 3. Uh, yes? That's going to be an x right there. Yes. Always an x. Okay. So, I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to start with the 84 people. So those of you who have an 84 calculator, let me move this over here so you can see this compared to this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to type in is an X right there. And then it jumps, notice it jumps right into the parentheses. Now we type in the X squared minus 2X plus 5 in the parentheses. 
Now notice that it's blinking a right arrow. The right arrow tells you that's how you get out of here and move to the next square. Notice that that box turned into an X because as soon as you put an X here, that turns into an X there. Just right arrow and it jumps to the last box. We're doing the derivative at three. So we type a three, push enter, and the answer is four. So basically what it did is it took the derivative of this function and it plugged a three in for you and gave you four. Now that's not a hard one to do by hand, but when they are hard to do by hand, this is very nice to use, okay? Any questions on the 84 method? Okay, the 83 method. So you push math eight, and this is what you see. For those of you with an 83, you're going to type the function in, which is x squared, make sure I type it right, minus two x plus five, then the comma, which is above the seven, comma, then an x again, and then another comma, and the three. Push enter, and there's your four. Any questions? Are we good on that? Okay, let's try another one. I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. We're going to do find g prime of 1.75 if g of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 1 over x minus 3. Okay, we're going to do this one slightly differently. Okay, first of all, let's kind of review for a minute. Is this a problem I would have to use the quotient rule on? Yes. Why? It has two terms in the denominator, exactly. So this is one we would have to use the quotient rule on. So that would be kind of involved to take the derivative and then plug in 1.75 and clean it up. So having the calculator is going to be nice. So here's what I want to show you. This is another way you can do it. Instead of typing this into the end derivative parentheses or into the parentheses here, we're going to put the function g of x into y1. And I want everybody to do this right now. Put g of x into y1. So we're going to go to y equals. We're going to type in. Now, if you have an 83 calculator and you don't, or if you don't use the fraction bar, you have to put the top and bottom in parentheses or you will get the wrong answer. If you like the fraction bar, let me review. It's alpha y equals and enter, but I'm in the old mode, so I've got to change it back, hang on. Let's do it now. y equals, there's my fraction bar, x squared minus 6x plus 1, down arrow, x minus 3. Okay? Are we all with the function y equals? Yes, sir. That'd be great. You can put that function in as well instead. Okay, but you should we look at that problem first? No, it's, if the calculator's going to do the math for you, don't worry about it. Okay? It's a good question, though. All right. Now, number two. If you are using an 83, you're going to type in n deriv y1, comma, x, comma, 1.75 instead of the function. And how do you put this in? In the new operating system also, you're going to put in the box a Y1 instead. So for the old OS, Y1 is found by doing the following. You're going to push the VARS key, which is right here. And I need to get out of here. Hang on just a minute while I do this. And do my second quit math eight. So if you're going to do math eight with the old calculator, follow along with me right now. Math eight. We're going to put the y one in there. We're going to push the vars key first. Vars is for variables. Then we're going to do y vars, which means right arrow, and then you're going to push enter twice. Enter, and then enter again. Enter, enter, and then it puts the y1 in the parentheses for you. 
and now you're going to type the comma x comma 1.75 with the old cal calculator and you get that and that's the right answer 6.120 Okay. Now, those of you with the new cal calculator, watch this. For the new, to get the Y1, I need to do some work here first. Just hang on a minute. Let me change back to the old way, or to the new way. Okay. Math 8. We have this sitting in front of you. Is that where everybody is on the new calculator? The X still goes there, but I want Y1 to go here. There's a really quick way to find it. You push alpha, you push trace, and you push enter. So we're going to push alpha, trace, enter. There it is. There's the Y1. And then right arrow over, put the 3 in there. So you didn't have to type in that yucky fraction. Whoa, what did I do wrong? Oh, that's right. So second enter. Let's go back. 1.75. There we go. That's why I got the wrong answer. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, do we have to learn both new calculators and calculators? No, ma'am. I'm just putting both of them on here for those of you to refer back to who need it. But, like, if on the test I'm using, like, the old one and then I have to use yours, I don't know. No, no, I will. What I'm decided I'm going to do is I'm going to let you use. Okay. From now on, if you have an 83 calculator that you're using at home all the time, you may use that calculator on the test. And you may also use it on the AP exam. Okay. okay? Yeah, the only people who get to use their own calculator on a test are those of you who have an 83. Otherwise, you have to use mine. Okay? And that's about three or four of you in here. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So we're putting the g of x equation into y1 just to, like, shorten up the process of writing it into the right. math Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. But if you write it into the math eight, it would give you the same answer? It would give you the same answer. So, like, if you were going to do, let's say you needed to find the derivative at five different points the Y1 might be a little bit faster. Or let's say you'd done something, you'd, let's say you'd graph the function in step one of a problem. And then it said, oh, find the derivative at this point. Well, you've already typed it into Y equals. So when you put it in here, it's better just to type the Y1. Okay? okay? Does that make sense? So I wanted to show you both ways so you know what they are. Like I said, this will be on video so that you can look back at it later on down the road when you're, I don't remember what we did. Here it is, okay? Any more questions?